Storybook will save you hours of headaches if you use it correctly. But for some, it can cause hours of headaches because I don't fully understand how to utilize this technology. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the basic setup using the latest version of Storybook. My name is Hakeem and I'm a Web3 developer at eBay. My mission is to teach you the latest developments in web development. So let's begin. Now in your terminal, simply run the command npx create react app, and then let's call it react storybook template, wait, template typescript. So this is gonna spin up a simple react app. Um, and then after that, we're gonna install storybook and I'm gonna show you exactly why it's so powerful. Perfect, now in your Visual Studio code, uh, simply run the command npx sb init, which will initialize storybook in your application. Press yes to install uh, eslint. After you install storybook, you will notice a new storybook folder here, which contains a main.ts and a preview.ts file. And the main.ts file is really the, well, main file where Storybook gets its configuration from. So we have the stories here, storage property in this config, which basically tells Storybook where to find its stories. Now stories is just another word for um, the components which are rendered in Storybook. The add-ons simply add new functionality to your Storybook. The framework is auto detected. So since we use create react app, it detected Webpack version five and the docs is an auto, the docs is an automatic feature, which I'll show you in a moment. This preview.ts file is for applying global styling to your stories. So parameters is defining the global parameters. You want to pass through to all of them, but you can also pass through things like, um, oops, you can also pass through um, things like decorators, which is a, a way to apply themes to the uh, stories. So let's say you've got a theme provider for your application, which has specific colors that would apply to every single story in your app. Now, what, what I really want to dive into right now is the new stories that have been created. So we have this stories.ts file here. Let's hide this. And as you can see, we have a bunch of stuff that you're probably not too familiar with, but the main things to care about is this const meta variable here, which defines the actual story itself. Each story is represented in this syntax. So you'll have const primary, which is the name of the story, and then you'll pass through the unique args or arguments to that component that you want to see. So let's see what, what this looks like. After I ran the init command, it started up the storybook instance for me. Let's skip the tour and head over to the button. As you can see, it auto-generated the documentation for me. That came from this flag up here, autodocs, which does it for you. And there's different scenarios for this button. So there's a primary color one, there's a secondary color, there's a large size and a small size. Now this is a very basic situation of why Storybook is so powerful. But what if this button had more states? So maybe it has a loading state or a disabled state, which you want to make sure that the disabled state of the button has zero functionality. Maybe the button has an icon on it somewhere, which you want to render. Again, there's so many different ways you can use Storybook to see this. So let's go back. Storybook allows you to view and test your components in isolation. So how would you do this without Storybook? Well, typically, you could do something like, um, let's head over to app.tsx, let's get rid of all this code here. Let's import the button, and then let's start the app again. Actually, I think it's npm run start. So you could test this manually by starting the app, having a page that has minimal styling, but as you can see, even this one has some styling applied to it. What if I wanna test through every single scenario? As we saw in the storybook instance, you can just pass through the specific arguments. Without Storybook to do that, you would have to do it very manually and it's extremely time consuming, especially when you have a more complicated component that has hundreds of different variations. Now Storybook saves you time as a developer, but it also saves the entire team time. So not just the developers, but the designers too. 
So a designer can come to your code, look at your storybook instance and correct things right now instead of later on when you're working on something else. Also, the documentation is great. As you can see, I did not have to do anything and it's already provided me documentation with descriptions, the parameters, all these different controls that I can use to play around with it for. So let's change the label around to test. Let's change the color to this. So Storybook gives you these amazing controls to just play around with your components. Now, Storybook is not just for singular components. Storybook can create stories for pages too, not just components. As you can see, we have a logged out state here. So the only thing that would change would be the header. So if we go to logged in, there we go. Now in the code, what you just saw was this page component here, and it also works with use state as you can see. So when I logged in and logged out, that was actually using the state. Now the story itself is this here, and it looks very small. There is a way we can improve this, however. Most pages or all pages rely on API data, right? So we call an API, return some data, and perhaps there's multiple API calls. Can you do this in Storybook? Is there a way I can mock this in Storybook? Well, there is. And in the, in the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up Storybook with something called Mock Service Worker. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.